Welcome back, everyone, uh, to the BD Swiss Trading Academy. My name is Frank, and uh, I'm your host today for the Start Smart webinar Trading Strategy Explained. And uh, as well, obviously, we'll be uh, checking out uh, possible market movements and uh, yeah, our according strategy as well to be ho hopefully profitable in the markets and in a current uh, market environment. So I can see the room is uh, picking up here. Some of the guys who are in there are my old good friends as well. Some are new faces here I can see. So welcome, of course, back here. And uh, obviously I can hear sounds all right. Okay, I get, uh, I get that one. Yesterday we had uh, information from the Federal Reserve. We had the interest rate decision on the from the uh, American Central Bank, which had been not as dovish as kind of expected. So there was no rate cut yesterday. I can see that here, monetary policy statement and interest rate decision standing strong at two and a half percent. But um, as well in the uh, underlying press conference, half an hour after that event, event we found out that as well there it went within the dot plots explains or the dot plots as a possible a guidance there from the central bank had been uh, started had been starting using those ones in i think it was 2012 to guide the markets on possible a uh, movement of um, interest rate adjustments so and those dot plots are kind of going a bit lower as well so they see two possible rate decreases over the next um, next coming month so obviously the uh, interest rate uh, might be getting weaker but of course on the other hand as well there was a lot of pressure pressure from the politics uh, there pressure from uh, donald trump uh, namely speaking donald trump was pressuring the uh, uh, the central bank and uh, of course Jerome Powell as he said would be his or was his is his uh, uh, person of choice to lead the central bank but of course he as well says uh, hey I fully do disagree with what he's doing with his job and uh, on the other hand then uh, uh, when when being asked about uh, adjustment of interest rates and how the uh, Federal Reserve could be being helpful for the economy and could save the economy from a further crisis. Uh, uh, then um, Jerome Powell was simply answering that they will fulfill their four year or he will fulfill his four year term as planned. So interesting uh, sides there, interesting notes, interesting information. The market used the, the uh, situation to uh, sell the US dollar rather off. And uh, we got that information, of course, uh, firsthand from uh, the central bank itself and uh, checked uh, on uh, that one as well in uh, doing their press conference, of course, as well. And looking at the dollar index, we can can see the market had been pretty much uh, on the higher area there. We came back all the way to that uh, resistance trend line here. That's the trend line I've drawn in a couple of days ago, so nothing new here. The market had been rising further towards that uh, resistance area, as we can see. So we had been falling through here. The market went lower, came back to the upside, tagged that uh, trend line again from the downside here, and then foo, yesterday bearish movement and today as well persistently a bearish movement from the greenback from the US dollar which we could be seeing possibly lasting somehow longer yet I wouldn't be expecting the market to be of a, a total game-changing mentality I don't understand and I don't think that the market uh, is uh, uh, changing uh, the direction uh, say towards other currencies let's have a look in the uh, euro dollar and currency pair here we closed uh, some trade yesterday we had the uh, one short position on we chose we closed um, we closed uh, a part of that position already uh, before the news event half of it we closed and the other half we got of course then in loss stopped out nevertheless uh, of course, we can see that the market and that the idea to get um, to get uh, out of that position was pretty much good. So what we got safe uh, safeguarded here from slightly further losses during the interest rate decision, which uh, of course in return then it makes sense, as we said, to kind of uh, cut the loss or cut the position short beforehand when the market during the uh, interest rate announcement was not really moving into a stronger US dollar pattern so uh, that's of course exactly why we thought of uh, like cutting some uh, losing position beforehand and uh, as I said this one now uh, looking to be uh, of a game changer here euro dollar looking to be going slightly to the upside yet as I said I don't really understand don't really think that the market will be going uh, much higher here 
we are at a certain key resistance area here at around the 113 region here. So we fell just, uh, say, 100 pips on the US dollar, fell about 100 pips, and uh, the euro, of course, could take that strength and uh, grow the market slightly. But as I said, I'm not really a uh, firm believer that the market situation will be uh, going further exactly to the opposite side. Here, I don't think that the market will be changing uh, to a bullish market movement. But of course, what we can see, and that was here, being uh, triggered by uh, the uh, by what was a non-farm payrolls on Friday two weeks ago on that day the US dollar kind of got weaker the market really rocketed to the upside here came back down last week all the way here and then this week here today as the, and yesterday we started rallying further to the upside so we could be seeing here a bullish breakout resistance area here broken to the upside market bullish down again and then boom moving to the upside that would be something we could be seeing because this one as in the mother candle or say starting of course uh, starting with that movement these two bullish uh, pin bars which were indicating possibly that the market might be going further to the upside uh, then the market rocketed uh, through that uh, resistance resistance area as we've seen it and now retest and boom market could be going higher yet again if we're looking at the interest rate differential just itself we can see that the money flows should be rather towards the us dollar because the interest rate obviously is still uh, at uh, a, a 2.5 percent much higher at uh, as the euro uh, and uh, of course this usually means as well if you have a higher interest rate that the money flows rather towards um, towards the currency which is offering the higher interest uh, of course because that one of course gives you like a better movement in the markets and gives you more interest which is why investors choose the currencies with the higher interest usually um, in normal cases at least to some extent uh, uh, but uh, this one should be also making medium term more sense than that the us dollar would be coming back rather to life today we have um, the uh, british uh, the british central bank the bank of england uh, here with their interest rate decision expected to be standing at uh, the same value 0.75 percent there's no adjustment to be expected in the markets we would be rather expecting that uh, the market movement here will be standing at uh, at around a similar level there and uh, that of course as well it will be uh, here or can be seen in the uh, unchanged to forecast here so the uh, the vote uh, the vote uh, the members of the uh, the members of the committee here the nine members are kind of unisono staying at one side here unchanged or vote cut or vote hike and uh, we have to see how this one goes of course because if now like now let's um, say six five six four five six people would be kind of our members would be going rather towards they say vote hike that means a rather bullish stand which could give the british pound of a bigger push because expectations of say a, uh, a rate increase in the near future uh, can be seen with that with the stand of the um, of the members of that committee and this one of course would be pushing the currency but uh, obviously we are quite far from uh, being uh, being uh, being closer to this one we would be rather possibly even seeing a, a vote cut here but uh, as said here interest rate decision likely standing Steady. We had seen a slight rate increase uh, in, in recent history here at the uh, Bank of England, but of course Mark Carney was always saying, "Hey, look, if we would talk, have not been having a Brexit, then the uh, interest rate uh, would have been possibly at a very different value than it is right now." And uh, as well, of course, we can see that currently here, that's the uh, German, uh, that's the German uh, news site here, that uh, at the moment Boris Johnson against who uh, is uh, what you can read at German news here. Boris Johnson uh, likely likely being the one who might be uh, in for a successor of uh, of uh, uh, Theresa May here. We have to see how that goes, but uh, of course he's a pretty much hardliner. He says, "Look, in October we're gonna have Brexit, no matter what. If it's a deal, no deal, or whatever, it really doesn't matter to us." So likely there will be some uh, not really change, but uh, of course on the other hand we will likely be seeing some uh, movement here in the market regarding uh, regarding Boris Johnson and Brexit in the same manner. So, of course, here, deviating now from the euro to the British pound, we can see that currently as well, the pound was able to get some strength out of that entire situation. So the 127 region here had been broken to the outside. This ATR level here, meaning uh, the, um, the um, 
the possible support and resistance area meant to be for the trading day based on recent uh, market movement, based on recent uh, volatility as we call it, so based on a possible high end or a low movement here, that's the one we could be seeing and uh, the pound is at, at the moment starting to, to rise uh, slowly but I think there's two things as well. There's uh, at least uh, the US dollar weakness and then there's of course the charting pattern, pattern which shows us that we have been uh, climbing beyond that resistance area, so resistance, resistance, resistance market going higher. This of course here might be likely showing us and getting us into some slightly further strength here, but of course the situation we can see as well, that support area there at around, what is it, 125.25, might be a signaling as well that uh, the possible bullish movement in the market might continue and looking in, then on the euro british pound we can see something similar obviously here is some uh, some tailwinds um, into the pound currency here can be seen so the euro is facing uh, like an, a pound which is like overtaking here that support area had been slightly broken to the downside um, for now so yesterday's trading showed us that the market really was able to break lower and looking from a weekly perspective we could be setting up for something interesting for next week just because uh, Next week, uh, year, if that one would be standing as a bearish pin bar, we could be selling the market further with some further downward facing pressure. Something what we've been having, say, in this region here, not pretty much a nice uh, trend line to see, but bullish, 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 and boom, and market was selling off to the downside. Something here could be happening it at the same time. So, Karl Heinz is asking me, hey, thanks a lot for the tips, for the information. Last evening, the tech profit would have been achieved this morning at 107.89. Uh, 107.89, uh, what are you talking about? 107.89. Um, on the dollar Japanese yen, yes, we had the short at our webinar yesterday, true. We were selling the market here, and I'm not sure what Alex did during his uh, webinar, but um, we were selling the dollar Japanese yen, and Karin says he was there. Uh, thanks, the tech profit had worked out at 107.89, and it was a nice trade. Uh, are you thinking that entry in gold would still make sense? Also, be wait a little bit. To some extent, I would be waiting because uh, on one hand here, car lines, we had been moving up already quite a fair bit. So I have set this the take profit now, the take profit on gold to 13.97. So I'm still in this uh, trading position. But what I, will, what I will be doing right now is we'll be adjusting the stop loss to break even and beyond because uh, some profit I took already off the table and gold really made a killing for us here. Gold, we want that, we want as well this position here. So roughly 2% here, a bit more than this one. Euro Norwegian Krona coming to this in a second, but uh, a market looking pretty much bullish still. Even though we could be seeing a retest here, the market still is looking uh, actually very much uh, to, uh, to go further to the upside. So, Karlheinz, yeah, I would say the market, uh, buying the market for some further strengthening higher, it could be seen. And the uh, question, of course, will be if there would be any sort of retracement to the downside or not, but the market is looking pretty much as said, pretty much bullish, which could be uh, giving us some further momentum here, some further uh, buying momentum to the upside. And going a bit further down the, re the road here, we can see the dollar against the Canadian is selling off as well. So the market really found a resistance area, exactly that blue line there, found the resistance area, and then subsequently change direction yesterday. Why that? Just because as well the market was of course a, a weakening, of, was, was seeing a weakening US dollar, meaning as well that the market's uh, movement to the downside could be staying in as well. But of course as well we can see that this one is likely depending also on oil prices. The oil market starting to rise further gradually. We're seeing some movement to the ups. US oil, or as in referred to WTI, USD. We call it also crude, or the other one we have here is crude light. The, um, and the North Sea oil as well. Crude light makes sense as well to grow technically to the upside if we can really stay above that support area and go further to this higher area. We could be seeing some further momentum to this higher area here and of course this one would likely be indicating some strengthening in the uh, Brent market and of course the strengthening oil market is meaning as well that, that uh, the Norwegian crown would be grow growing substantially. 
that uh, in, interestingly enough that huge move to the downside was not really going to be expected but uh, interestingly enough we're sitting at the 968-965 region here which could be meaning as well that uh, yeah further downward facing pressure could be seen ahead. Yet of course problematic because the market had made such a big move and we are just right next to that uh, big support region here is uh, why we have to be uh, careful here with that uh, position over that trading. Our trade had been uh, uh, re rising into a target, so that take the trade really worked out. We uh, uh, sold at 9.77 and we got profit 9.70, so the break, say, the break of that support area to the downside could be seen on the daily chart as well in this region here. So we, we pretty much have sold here and then boom, and made it, made it lower. We were holding this position for quite a while, I think, uh, 12, yeah, just about a week. So we can see exactly we had this pin bar here, then the market, we sold the market, and then it went sideways, sideways, slightly up, but yet, of course, yeah, here it went lower again and uh, triggered our take profit, which in the end, of course, uh, had been working uh, nicely and had been uh, making a nice, uh, nice profit. Knock had interest rate increased this IM2. Yes, exactly. The interest rate announcement was, of course, the key part here regarding this, but uh, the market movement, uh, the quite imminent market movement to the downside here was not really to be expected that big. But of course, in this case here, we had uh, we had finally some game changing chances in order to kind of benefit uh, our position. And of course, this short position here is really looking good to gradually even go further and uh, further beyond. Uh, towards some lower low areas and the more we look at it here the more bearish the market will be likely presenting itself so could be technically seeing even some further uh, downward facing momentum the market and the norwegian crown a bit tricky to trade here because it's not only uh, the uh, oil market it's quite a us dollar related in terms of trade and oil trade it's a Norwegian crown, of course, uh, economy related in terms of the oil. So it's not an easy currency to trade. You cannot simply just apply some charting patterns here and wait for the market to go. I've tried this in the recent, in the recent say, one, two years, and it was not always very much successful, I have to admit. So the question is, of course, does it really make sense? But uh, one thing as well, which really is uh, kind of beneficial for us, if the market really moves into one direction, quite often you will get a, a big movement here, which can be seen as something sustainable, which uh, of course then makes it nicely to have that position. The market is having nice and big volatility. So imagine here, I have a very small position size here, but uh, can, we can make quite a bit of a profit out of this one. So the more you play with this one, just some smaller positions here they are very much important to use. Else, uh, you might be kind of uh, you might be seeing yourself into some bigger volatility when it comes into your uh, trading account. Gold markets rise gradually further. Canadian dollar strengthening here. We can see Eurocad. We closed unfortunately before the news event yesterday here. I closed the remaining position of the Euro Canadian dollar. That was maybe not the smartest one because now we are really close by our adjusted target here. The initial target was in that area here. We adjusted the target towards some lower area here. So anyways, in this case, we made money anyways, but uh, we could have been uh, making up a bit more here in that trading position. Let's have a look here what we did. But uh, of course, as well, better safe than sorry. That was my idea before the news event of interest rate decision yesterday. I was uh, closing that market out. And uh, this one, of course, as well, gave us quite some nice uh, profit here as well. So nothing technically really, nothing much missed, but just a slightly less profit than previously expected. What else we're having right now? We're seeing the gold market rising further. That's possibly a sign of risk off. So a market, gold market, precious metals rising, meaning as well that, uh, that um, in general, the market participants are rather moving away from risky assets. Risky assets are like stock markets here, but we can see also the stock market is gradually uh, growing higher. We can see the S&P growing. We can see the Nasdaq is growing, the Dow Jones as well, and even the DAX here. So a bit of buying pressure, buying power still ahead. And this one could mean as well that uh, some further movement to the upside in the stock markets can be seen, but still, of course, also the risk, uh, market risk here is uh, pretty much visible there. And uh, if, unless we don't, or say, 
unless we really come back all the way to the downward facing area to that say 1350 region here i would be saying hey look the market looks pretty much bullish if we're coming back to that lower area here and giving us a sell signal here market kind of moving and uh, changing direction further uh, showing us some downside momentum of course then we have some issues unless uh, that happens still the market looks pretty much bullish why because we have cleared that resistance area here so market went up came down went up came down and then now went up here and broke through and this one now could be indicating that the market comes back to the downside here tests retests that resisted or say previous resistance then support area and then takes off to the upside which in the short term basis could be looking like something like this here that uh, uh, where did we have it? We didn't have it here. Market finds resistance somehow here, comes back to that uh, support area at around, say, 13.45, and then really takes off for some further gains. In any case, we stay in. We have just uh, increased, uh, raised our stop loss here towards some higher high. Maybe I put it here below that, uh, say, slightly in the uh, in range of that um, of that last candle. I think that's a pretty safe spot here in order to kind of safeguard also some a profit from the remaining position. So moving away to the last spot here, to our dollar jappy, as um, Karl Heinz was saying as well, the market could be right to kind of get back here to the upside because we have uh, we have been stopping all the way here at the 107.50 range there at that the lower area which is called um, which is like mostly here the ATR so the the daily range to the downside here could not have been uh, broken further for some lows why that just the US dollar but it's showing a bit of strength back on the table that's for sure but also the Japanese yen is not really gaining more momentum just because the stock markets are rather rally so if the stock markets would uh, starting to stall out there and go further to the downside we could be seeing that the, that the Japanese as well would be coming back that the japanese yen would be getting stronger to some extent but uh, here at this uh, in this market environment we can see as well that uh, uh, the recent movements here would be showing us that of course that uh, the previous movement and the actual movement make totally sense on the a daily chart we had been clearing that uh, support area we had been clearing that range here to the downside so what we could be seeing right now uh, looking at the, the daily chart is that the market either comes back to the upside which i rather don't think so i think we just see a continuation pattern here a bearish movement retest bearish movement small retest bearish sideways and then and a bearish pattern here towards the next say early 107 range 106 range here looking at the weekly chart of course we have cleared that support area here support support and then full market could be really going all the way further here towards the 107.50 where we have been already or when we are closing by at around that lows the next area lows here say at around the one say 107 107 even that would really make sense just uh, at that range where uh, there's a psychological number at the way as the way at the bottom as well plus of course then it will make it a nice continuation pattern to the downside so guys let's have a look later on we're meeting up soon again here for the interest rate decision in great britain we see how it goes i don't expect big things to happen there because uh, what uh, should uh, mark Carney and uh, his team be doing there they're still kind of stuck in between Brexit talks and uh, a political search or a search for a political new leader for the country as well. So a few things happening that I don't think that there's anything rather bullish. I think rather some slight dovish comments could be seen. The pound could be weakening slightly. But then, of course, uh, on a weekly basis, we have a look here what's going on. If we're looking on the euro pound uh, on a daily or weekly basis here, this could mean as well that the market might be going further to the downside so pound yen uh, is not bad says Karl Heinz yep we had our trade there uh, the last uh, yesterday that trade really kicked off 136.30 all the way to 136.80 we really kind of went into target already yesterday so what we did is we bought the market here and then boom, a couple hours later we really rocketed straight straight through uh, the target area which is uh, one of the positions I really enjoy. If something like this happens, that's always like something, some easy money when you don't need to worry much about it. And uh, happy that those trades, among also other positions, are working out nicely because currently we can see our account is in pretty good, good shape again. 
previous open positions here came all back and uh, we likely have some good news to celebrate uh, later on as well. Guys, that's all for the time being. I wish you happy trading. I hope uh, my explanations, a bit of a market analysis and uh, outlook for what could be happening soon is fruitful and beneficial for your own uh, trading. Just, uh, of course, always trade with care, have a look what's going on, and then we discuss later for the Bank of England webinar here at BD Swiss. Take care, guys. Happy trading. Bye-bye.